I'm Leanne Dilley. I'm the director of the women's ministry. I have that privilege here at the church. And um, today, I want to welcome you to Wednesday noon prayer. Uh, we had a fabulous worship session this morning as a staff, so I'm feeling really full today. And um, I want to talk to you about hope anyway, so that's kind of a great place to be. Um, and I'm kind of curious how you have been spending your evenings during this pandemic. So if you want to tell me that in the chat, I would love to hear about that. And uh, we'll go from there. <laughs> oh, good, Cindy, Cindy Ungerman, good. We are live, that's, that's hopeful <laughs> to begin with, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so just to repeat that in case we had a slow start, um, I'm Leanne Dill Dilley, and I am privileged to be the Women's Ministry Director here at Timberline Church. So um, uh, I want to speak to on hope today and um, love to hear what you do with your evenings during this pandemic. Um, I'm just curious because mine these days look very different than before the pandemic, um, especially since the time has changed and we have so much darkness outside. Uh, I find that uh, after a long day, my husband and I, to tell you the truth, I'm a little embarrassed to even say, we spend a lot of time on the couch uh, searching for something to entertain us. And usually that goes to Netflix, right? And we joke among ourselves at the house that, uh, our new way of asking people what's new in their lives is to ask them what they're watching on Netflix. And it's funny how everyone has an answer to that too. So um, I guess it's a recent trend. <laughs> but recently we discovered a little show called um, When Calls the Heart. And I, you know, do you remember the shows like The Waltons or Little House on the Prairie? Anybody remember that? Um, it's kind of like one of those. They're very, it's a very relational ship driven show with good lessons, but it's a little, um, what would be the word, uh, syrupy perhaps. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I'll tell you about it a little bit. When Calls the Heart, it's based on a book of the same name and it takes place in a small pioneer town in Canada, somewhere around the turn of the 19th century. Um, and the town is called Hope valley so this is a hallmark production so maybe it says it all and by that i mean um it doesn't really feel real all the time um although there's something really endearing about it so um uh before you start to think i have a disclaimer before you start to think you know that i've really lost it here <laughs> i know this is a television show and there are writers who write a script for these people who are actors and um, you know their problems are solved in an hour and life doesn't always work that way. So I know this, okay? Um, but I still think there's some good lessons here. So that's why I'm bringing this up. Um, after a few episodes of this show, I started to realize something really unique about this show. And everyone in town was living their life through biblical principles. And, you know, they spoke to each other kindly. They encouraged each other. They cared for widows and orphans. Um, they helped each other out without being asked. And when the townspeople, you know, that were kind of quirky or had um, obvious faults uh, were in question, they were, they were accepted for who they were, not judged. Um, and, you know, when behavioral in, uh, issues kind of arose um, from a townsperson or maybe a child, you know, extra care was given to that person to see what the real issues were behind that behavior. Uh, Children were valued and listened to. So among all this niceness though, uh, they were never afraid to hold each other accountable for a mistake or a misstep, you know, and they spoke the truth in love. And even if the, correct, if the correction was um, not exactly welcomed at first, the person that was confronted eventually came around. <laughs> you know, they're humble people and they forgave and they asked for forgiveness when that was necessary. And the real clincher is they were not afraid to pray or bring God into the picture. 
So I guess to say, if you can get over the pre predictability factor of this little show and the fact that it doesn't really resemble real life, um, I found it refreshing. Um, consider all the shows out there that you could be watching and probably are watching on Netflix. It's nice to find something that has that upholds good, true Christian values. Um, and the lessons are so valuable. Um, and it's sad that these lifestyles represented feel fake and far-fetched. And, you know, they don't have to because we have a God that is present and active. You know, while the stories of Hope Valley are not real, we have similar stories that are all around us that are real. And we suffer. We make mistakes. We need to encourage each other. And yes, sometimes we even need to be called out. Um, we have a role to play, and we also have a script, which is interesting. The script is the Bible. You know, everything that we need to know how to respond to situations and in relationships and how to treat each other is found in this Bible. You know, the guiding principles that we need to draw from are in there as well, you know. And it occurred to me that the people of Hope Valley are products and produce the fruit of the Spirit. So think about it, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I mean, who couldn't use a little more of all of those, right? Um, in addition, they live by the greatest commandment, to love one another as we love ourselves, you know. And because we can't do this on our own, we really do need to bind our spirit with God's spirit. So it made me wonder what our world would look like if we actually treated each other in this, in this way, using all the fruit of the spirit. And I guess this gives me hope. It's nice to be reminded, and it gives me hope. So let's go to prayer about this. Um, Holy Spirit, come, just come. Come into our lives and be present in a very real way this week. It's nice to know, Lord, that we can invite you to bind your spirit with ours. Show us, Lord, how to love each other well and help us to understand and love even those that we don't agree with Help us to be humble, to seek forgiveness when we need, and teach us how to forgive. Lord, help us to surrender our need for forgiveness. Thank you, Lord, for the guiding principles that you have given us and the truth that you have given us in the Bible. Lord, show us how to apply all these truths to our lives so that we no longer have to imagine what it's like to live by the Spirit, but we will produce the fruit of the Spirit as a result. For ourselves and for those around us, Lord, mostly, Lord, we just ask that you give us hope this week. There is not a person among us that hasn't been through a difficult time in the past several months or needs encouragement or had to make some big adjustments. Lord, but you promise that you will renew us every morning. And so we cling to that promise today. Amen. I want to leave you with one thought. I would love to have you all think about one fruit of the Spirit that maybe you need more of or you would like to share more of and really just focus on that this week and ask God to help you bring that to your awareness more and share it with others. And you can write about it in the chat if you want. Thank you, have a great week.